at CAEA. I did this presentation, but things have changed since then. Um, but I'm going to speak very briefly about digital portfolios and the kind of path I came to get there. And then Ali's going to come up and talk about the recommended software that we both are using um, and kind of explain how to use that specific software. So mine's going to be a lot more um, theological, where hers is going to be practical, I guess. So, digital portfolios. Uh, digital portfolios, e portfolios. Um, it's basically a collection of usually non-digital student artwork, although of course if you're a digital artist, you can be making portfolios of that artwork as well, but it makes it much easier. I guess we're talking about non-digital because it's harder to collect. If it's already on a computer, it's easy to collect, right? Um, and we want to take this non-digital stuff and make it digitized for assessment monitoring, monitoring, maybe showcasing our students' work, and for students to reflect upon their own work. That's kind of how we're approaching um, I've been dispersed my kids are working there, so I'll flip through them quickly. Um, the benefits of an e-portfolio, multiple literacies like text, graphic, links, color, audience, living, involving product. It, make, it can make artwork public. Uh, it can broaden your approach to assessment. Uh, you don't have to bring stacks of artwork home to grade, although I don't grade my works of art anymore anyway. Uh, it's going to develop tech skills and Dr. Carolyn Barrett is like a big guru in our in education for online portfolios. I left the link here. This presentation is on the Padlet, so I'm gonna move away, sorry. Um, so ideally, if I were making a digital portfolio, I want it interactive so the kids can be commenting on each other's work. I want to be able to store multimedia software, so not just photographs, but videos and voice recordings, etc. I want it to be individualized so kids can actually take their portfolios and make it look special for their own. I want it to have some sense of security through password protection or whatnot. Um, I want to be able to use it for assessment, and I want it portable. And what I mean by portable is that kids can take these portfolios and use them in other classes, or take them with them as they move on to, in my case, high school, because I'm in a K-8, um, that sort of situation. Not all of these goals I have reached. It, it's dependent upon the software, right? Whee! Creating a digital portfolio. So basically, you need to take a picture of your student artwork. And then you have to think about where are you going to store it, how are you going to organize it, and how will you access it. When I first started teaching at the international school, I was a middle school and high school art teacher, and the elementary teacher had a full-time para because she was the wife, wife of the vice principal. Uh, and so she had her para photograph every student working on a project and the finished project, and then just within folders on her desktop, would have a cl each class, then each class, each kid would have a folder, and then each folder would have a project, because she was Dutch, so there's no way she would have been doing math. Sorry, that's very <laughs> racist, but she would admit it too. She's like, this is how it goes, and you have to do it this way. But anyway, um, and then she would have those photos of the in progress and the finished works for every student. I'm like, oh my god, that's so cool, there's no way I have time for that. Um, so let's embrace technology. Um, options for storing photographs would be things like Dropbox, Artsonia, which also is a fundraising alternative, Picasa and Flickr, um, and then the new one, I think, is Three Ring, which we were, we're going to be talking about today. That's the recommended one. We have a lot. Um, for showcasing artwork, we can do things like Blogger, if they're asterisks, it means things that I've used in the past. Google Sites, Weebly, which is a website creation thing. I strongly recommend Weebly for making classic websites because they're easy to make and they look real professional. They look really good. Um, Animoto is kind of like a, it's like a slideshow, but it's animated, so it's kind of cool. Tumblr, Kidblog, Wikispaces, Moodle, if you don't know what Moodle is, feel lucky, it's very confusing. And again, three ring. <laughs> you see it, three rings popping up in multiple places, so it's that's why we recommend it. Later soon. Uh, 
So essentially, I'm a very lazy person. I'm very busy. I don't want to spend three hours every day organizing student art artwork. Uh, my school uses a Weebly blog. There's the address. And there I have a slideshow of some of the outstanding artwork. I do something called Artists of the Week. Every week I pick an artist, uh, one of the students, and I interview them. And it's like a little blog post, and then we publicize it to the parents and stuff. And it's very cute. Uh, things like wish lists for, you know, egg cartons and stuff that we're always wanting to send to the parents. Um, I would say probably 10 to 20 percent of my student population has access to the internet. But it's interesting, even in like uh, Title I schools, how many of your kids and your kids' families have access to the internet via cell phones. It's the, the way technology is. Um, Economics doesn't necessarily mean they don't have access to technology. It doesn't mean that it might not mean that they have a computer, but they still might be able to get online. So that's kind of cool. Um, so I was using Flickr in combination with KidBlog, and actually then I went on to do Flickr in combination with Blogger, where the kids would take the photograph within Flickr in an app in an iPhone or a, a tablet. It would automatically upload to Flickr, and then they could pull it off Flickr and put it onto the blog. What's nice about KidBlog, which you'll see, is that middleman step is gone. It's all within one app now, which is lovely. Um, like I said, organization, and also it's really easy for students to be doing artist statements. I have my own students take their art photographs of their artwork, except for kindergarten and first grade, and sometimes second grade. But second grade and above, I have a set of iPod touches in my classroom. And you'll see Three Rings interface is easy enough that they take photographs of their own artwork and use it to make artist statements and stuff. And it kind of is up to you how comfortable you are with the younger kids because they might accidentally take a photograph and it gets stored in the wrong kids folder or something. I don't really care, I can fix it really quickly, but some, some of you might not like that. Um, and we can, do in, we can do in progress photographs and process photographs, stuff like that. Here's my classroom. So you can see here's my iPod cart, and I have computers back here. These are all grants that I wrote. No, this is a site-specific art classroom. Yeah. Those three sinks. Three sinks, yes. I didn't have one. And behind me is a patio. Is this a patio? Yeah, like a porch. Uh, mine's on those tours. One of mine's on there. I'm very proud of my classroom. I got, I hit the jackpot. I got very lucky. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get into three ring in a second, but just for things that I want to do in the future that I haven't been able to do yet. Um, I'm going really quickly, and I apologize. Uh, right now, I don't publicize. I keep it all private, it's just for me. There's ways of setting up three rings where parents can access it and stuff, but I haven't done that yet um, for various reasons. But I'd also love it if kids could start commenting on each other's artwork which there is a way of doing in three ring. Again, I just haven't set that up yet. Um, three, like I said, three rings not exact for how I set it up. It isn't very public right now. It's mostly for my own record keeping. Um, I'd also, and this is an easy one I could start doing soon, but you'll see through three ring, it's not just photographs. It's also write, you can write and you can record voices and stuff. So maybe practicing on art criticism, I can have a running document of how they criticize artwork and reflect on others' artwork other classmates and also, you know, artwork from the world. Um, yeah, so communicate with other classrooms. There's this idea of the flipped classroom. Are you guys familiar with this? No. So this runs under the assumption that your kids have computers at home. But the idea is, and it was actually started by science teachers here in Colorado, that you film, you film your lecture. So in our case, you film your five-minute demo. And that would be the student's homework. So they would, for homework, they would watch the demonstration. And when they come to class, they get to work right away. And so in a tab classroom, we're pretty good because we only do this five minute demo. So most of the time is us working in small groups and one-on-one -on -one working with kids. But in a science classroom and math classrooms and all that stuff, the traditional model is you spend all class doing the lecture and then the kids go home to work it out on their own. And so it would be the opposite, where the kids watch the lecture at home, and then they come to class to do the homework. And so you're there to help them. 
So there's ways of like, you know, film, instead of giving your five minute demonstration, maybe filming it so that then kids can go and like they're absent and look it up and stuff. And it's totally doable, I just don't have time to do it. Um, and I'd I'd love also love to have like link to other art classrooms so that can like be criticizing other artists in other classrooms. And you know, with me my history of international schools, I'd love for them to be chatting with kids in Korea or something about their work and stuff. Um, Ian, Ian, not Ian, Ian Sands, who writes now for the Art of Education, which is like an online art education web magazine, um, he does a similar thing, but he has blog, and this is high school, he has blogger sites for each of his students. He uses Dropbox, and it's just one big folder with all the pictures, and he kind of likes that because then the kids can see all the other artwork while they're digging into theirs. Um, but they upload usually about once or twice a semester, and then they kind of write a reflective piece and make almost blogs with their artwork. Um, it's another option. And there's a ton of student artwork. I'm not gonna waste your time looking at that. This kid should be in Daft Punk, by the way. Um, <laughs> really quickly, I wanna show you something. So this is a piece that was done about two months ago by one of my fifth graders. He, <coughs> skill-wise, obviously wasn't quite up with the rest of his classmates. Um, conceptually, whenever I would come and speak to him, I said, so what's going on? What are you making? He's like, oh, it's got with wings. You know, I'm like, oh, cool, what does it mean? He's like, I don't know, it's a guy with his wings. And like, anytime I talk with him, he just wouldn't give me very much, right? But you'll see through this three rings, so I, he took this photograph, and that's why you can see his laugh in the <laughs> photo. If it's a photo that I want for like, showing, I'll, I'll re-photograph sometimes, the, like the rock star ones from my own records. Or I'll bring it into Photoshop and clean it up. But after they photograph it, they go on three rings, and then I let them either write an artist statement, voice record an artist statement, or videotape an artist statement. And they might just be standing there filming the artwork and talking, or I've also got videos of like another kid holding the camera, like interviewing them with the artist statement. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, so I want to have you guys listen to this artist statement, which also, this is what the three ring interface looks like on your computer, isn't a great artist statement, but it was amazing what he felt comfortable communicating to me since he was just talking to a little machine. Does that make sense? So. The media I used for my artwork was crayons, my uh, tempera paint, um, and um, um, what my artwork, what my artwork was about was um, was um, my brother and um, how he died of um, in cancer, and yeah. So this is a portrait of his brother that just recently passed away, and. Nobody knew that. Nobody knew that his brother passed away because he's new to our school. Um, so it's, it's, it's a cool thing. And letting the kids take a little bit of ownership and have a little bit of privacy, it, it, there's a lot of benefits to it. So I ran really quickly and I apologize. I'm going to send it out and come on up and do her thing. Is it just an app or is it? Um... You would set it up on a web page and then you get the app for any item. So I can go there on my computer. Yeah. Yes. So my app's open on there so you can see like what I have in mind. As long as you don't touch it. <laughs> it's not on the app. Yeah, it's, it's on, it would just be a website. But is it only for Apple or can you have it on Apple? No, anything that takes a picture, any device that takes a picture. So is it on, on Android devices? Is there an app made for it? I, I thought so. Yeah, I, don't I have know. it on Android. Is it? And then if you only have like a digital camera, you can just use the computer version. It just, you have to plug in your computer and download the photos. It's just a couple extra steps. Whereas the app does it all for you. So, um, so I'm pretty much just going to show you guys um, the app. I just started using it um, not too long ago. So like Adam, I think Adam, you just started using it too, right? Yeah, I started using after you talked about it at CAE. That's the big thing. You guys are talking about how good I am at tech. 
it, it's just a fearlessness. Like, what's the worst that can happen? Do you break it? It's just a machine. I know it's expensive, but it's just a machine. Just get in there and start pushing buttons and figure it out, you know? So I just get in there and try to break it on purpose and see what happens. That's, that's how I use technology. So anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll explain it. Okay, so Three Ring, it's a free app that helps you easily manage student portfolios like Adam showed us. Um, how it works, so teachers can create an online account. Um, so you just do this on your desktop or your laptop. And then you can use like your smartphone, iPad, tablet to upload student work. So if you have a desktop, you would set it up on your desktop. And then any kind of device that can take pictures, but I don't think you, you can't use like digital camera. It has to be. Well, you could take a digital camera and then download it on your computer and do it there. But right. That, but that kind of defeats the purpose of yeah. the awesomeness of it. Yeah. So if you have like any kind of.